Do we really need to weigh cucumber? Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Golden Ratio, and we'll be reviewing fellow Canadian and fitness and lifestyle YouTuber, Will Tennyson. But first, let me tell you about my sponsor, Golden Ratio. So as you guys know, I am passionate about my coffee. <coughs> and despite the fact that I have a very sensitive tummy, and that can generally mean that my morning ritual doesn't always agree with me, I literally cannot give it up. So I was very excited to try Golden Ratio's Monish Certified Coffee. So this is an alternative to coffee that is five times less acidic and it has the essential caffeine that we love and we need, but without the bitter taste of coffee. So even though I normally feel like I need like a lot of milk or some cream in my coffee to make it palatable for me, I actually find that I can drink Golden Ratio completely black. Or I guess I should say gold. I love gold. So these come in little pouches that you steep kind of like tea. So it's really easy to prepare without any equipment. And because it's actually gold in color, it doesn't stain your teeth. So if you want to give golden ratio a try, check out my link in the description for 15% off of your order. Now, before we get into it, feel free to pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with current or previous experiences with disordered eating. And if you are new here, please do not forget to subscribe and ring that little bell so that you never miss out on an episode. Okay, so if you don't know Will, he's a Canadian fitness influencer, and actually he lives quite close to me, and we know a lot of the same folks here in the GTA in the industry. So he does a lot of fitness challenges, and he shares his workouts and his diet regimens, and in this video, he's sharing his new cutting diet to lose some fat and build back some muscle after a summer of traveling. So let's jump into what Will eats in a day. My diet has changed dramatically. So I have reduced the amount of artificial sweeteners I'm eating and focusing a lot more on whole foods. You know, I'm kind of done chasing the feeling of, you know, just wanting to feel super, super full. And I'd rather actually feel good as well. I love this sentiment. I definitely think that with age and time, you start to gather a bit more data on how certain foods make you feel. So it is interesting and telling to me that Will has found that he feels better consuming fewer artificially sweetened foods. Now, as I've discussed in my video on artificial sweeteners here, the long-standing assumption that sweeteners cause cancer has been thoroughly debunked. So you do not have to worry about that. But for a lot of folks with sensitive guts, certain sweeteners or consuming sweeteners in excess can be triggering, especially things like sugar alcohols and sucralose, AKA Splenda. So if Will is feeling better by cutting those out or really cutting back on those, then I think that's a really great choice. We are gonna wake and shake with a smoothie and some eggs. What? You're drinking your calories? Yes, but this smoothie makes me feel good. It energizes me. It keeps me full actually. And this is why I have it every single day. Put it onto your scale. One cup of coconut water. 40 grams of some celery, one apple of one full lime, some spinach, frozen pineapple, blend it up, and on the side make some scrambled eggs. And the reason why it's regular in my diet is because it keeps you regular. You wanna keep the calories down. Of course, do egg whites is definitely the smarter way to go. I just like them and I feel really good on whole eggs. Okay, so this looks really amazing. And I love that Will has switched himself from egg whites only, which of course are lower in calories to the full egg, which includes the yolk, if they make him feel better. And he also finds them more delicious. So egg yolks have been long demonized in the health community, but actually the latest research combining a prospective cohort study, a meta-analysis and a systematic review suggests that moderate egg consumption, about an egg a day, is not associated with heart disease. And they actually reduce the risk in some populations. But here we've got some carbs in the fruit, we've got protein in the yogurt and the eggs, and a bit of fat in the eggs as well, plus lots of veggies. And I also love the kimchi action there for those probiotics as well. 
Now, in this clip, he calls out that his fans would likely be shocked that he's drinking his calories in a smoothie, since he apparently often talks about avoiding liquid calories when you're on a cut. But it may actually be advantageous to have the fruits and vegetables in this kind of pre-digested form when you want to prevent indigestion pre-workout. So the smoothie in this case does make sense to me, um, but I will say that I know he's on a cutting phase and sometimes athletes at this level do need to be a bit more specific on their macros, but I don't know how necessary it is to weigh out your celery and cucumber. That seems pretty intense to me. I was so hungry, I could not wait. So meal number two is some salmon with some white rice. I'm eating white rice with some spinach and green beans, 445 calories and 35 grams of protein. Okay, so for a post-workout, I would say this is a textbook balanced meal. We've got healthy fats and protein in the salmon. We got a good serving of simple carbs in there to help replenish those glycogen stores quickly and drive that protein into the muscle. And we've got some green beans and some greens for micronutrients and a little extra fiber. Now, I assume that this was pre-prepped before the gym because he seemed pretty desperate to eat when he got home. And I do find that batch prepping like a big pot of rice and a few fillets of fish and a bunch of veggies at the start of the week is a really great way to make sure that you have something satisfying in the house as soon as that hunger hits. But I do just want to note that contrary to previous belief, and he didn't say anything about this, but I'm just mentioning it, that the anabolic window is not as narrow as we previously thought. So it's not absolutely essential that we get that post-workout meal in immediately for muscle growth. Unless you're starving, which it seems like he might've been in this case. You get a little loopy when you're hungry. Better. Better. Let's go yeah. So get that food in stat. So I've actually just tried to start eating more variety of protein throughout the day. I usually just stuck to like one or two types, but now I'm like really constantly changing it. I love that Will is switching up all of his protein options because like I always say, variety is the spice of life. It seems like Will is really making an effort to not only pay attention to the numbers for helping him meet his fitness goals, but also to diet quality for general health. Also love that he's working tofu into the usual rotation, especially since soy-based products have often been demonized in the fitness community for their alleged feminizing effects. But there's actually been a ton of research done on the phytoestrogens found in soy products. And contrary to what bro culture often suggests, they do not affect testosterone levels despite their estrogen-like properties. So kudos to Will for helping put that unfounded myth to bed. Overnight oats, one cup of cashew milk, one scoop of protein of your choice, one cup of oatmeal raw, a little bit of fruit, 175 grams of some coconut yogurt. There is 640 calories and I have around half, so around 320. This looks awesome and also inherently very well balanced. So we've got carbs in the oats and fruit and a little bit of protein in that yogurt and of course in the protein powder. Now it is a little low in fat. So if this was my bowl of oats, I would probably want to add like some nuts in there for the crunch factor. But I'm also not super surprised that it's on the low fat side since again, I know that Will is on a cut. It's really not uncommon in the fitness community to cut fat if anything is gonna be cut, since fat is calorically dense, and when it comes to muscle protein synthesis specifically, it's arguably the less important macronutrient compared to carbs and protein. Of course, not less so important for general health, but possibly less important for specific fitness goals. I was very happy to see him have that omega-3 rich fatty fish for meal two, which is kind of a rarity in the tilapia obsessed fitness community. So I do think that having a lower fat meal three in this context is totally fine. Before dinner is coming down to the condo gym and running until we burn 300 calories each. So sometimes you come down, you don't feel great. You just kind of want to walk it out. Um, and you won't burn as many calories. So this just keeps things consistent across the board. Okay. So first of all, I like that he has an activity that he can do with his girlfriend that they both enjoy. I mean, I wish I could get my husband to step foot in a gym. Time 
It's a game. But I digress. As for the 300 calorie goal, I'm sure Will is well aware of this and he's kind of just using the 300 calorie counter on the treadmill as a bit of an arbitrary goal post that he could theoretically be manipulating up or down as his trading regimen changes. But I just want to note that the calorie expenditure counter on fitness equipment is notoriously inaccurate. Ellipticals are generally the most deceptive and they've been shown to overestimate your calories burned by about 130 calories in 30 minutes. And equipment like the Stairmaster can easily be hacked by leaning forward, which would significantly reduce the calories burned. Basically, one study found that the stationary bike overestimated by 7%, treadmill by 13%, stair climber by 12%, and the elliptical by 42%. Honestly, if you're using this data as just like a benchmark, as it sounds like Will is doing, I don't think there's any harm in that. But if you're using it to inform how much you should eat, which is kind of what Will did in one of his challenge videos here, which is more in line with kind of like our calorie counting ballerina situation, then it's very possible that you could grossly overestimate your caloric needs. Now, if you want to make these number outputs on these machines a little more accurate, just make sure that you are inputting your weights and any other demographics it asks for. And of course, keep your hands off the handlebars. For the cardio, we both actually remove our Apple Watches from our wrists. What? Because this is in addition to our 10,000 steps that we already do. Okay, so I just wanna preface this by saying that I know in Will's situation that again, he's on a cut and often cardio comes with the territory. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of his viewers are kind of in the same boat and have the same goals. But just as a reminder to most of you watching my video here, I just want to let everyone know that you don't have to pile a 30 minute sprint on top of getting in your 10,000 steps a day, which FYI is an arbitrary goal based on a marketing campaign in 1965, not legitimate science. Research actually suggests that more modest increases in step counts are also associated with reduced risk of disease and better health. And again, I know that Will has goals beyond just health, but I'm just sharing this for those of you who already probably feel very overwhelmed. As for fitness trackers like smartwatches, they are likely more accurate than a piece of fitness equipment at determining your calorie burn. But a recent meta-analysis of 60 studies found that energy expenditure estimates vary in accuracy depending on the activity type and the product. So one study found that while Apple Watch was one of the most accurate, a tracker like the Pulse On could be off by a whopping 93%. That's potentially hundreds of miscounted calories. So this is one of the many reasons why I prefer to take all of these external sources of data with a pretty big grain of salt. The best tofu dish, russet potato, bell pepper, and two garlic cloves, whole entire block of tofu. So you're gonna take the block and just you're gonna break it up. We're adding some nutritional yeast, which is a very trendy cheese substitute in a mashed avocado. This looks incredible. Um, I love that we have lots of protein in the tofu, some carbs in the potato, healthy fats in the avocado, and lots of fiber rich veg. Now the nutritional yeast also adds about 16 grams of protein in a quarter cup. So this is a very delicious and high protein vegan meal. Now I'm about to get way more technical than needed for 99.9% .9 of the population, but for most athletes, we would ideally want to see four to five doses or meals of 0.25 to 0.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So based on my rough estimation of Will's weight, which I'm gonna peg at around 180, 190 pounds, you're looking at ideally 20 to 35 grams of protein per meal. So this is still on the larger side of what's optimal for muscle protein synthesis. So he could theoretically spread this into two meals with about three to four hours between them for optimal utilization. But I also believe food and eating should not run your life. And if you're constantly and unnaturally going just from one meal to the next, just to support your gains, it leaves you very little room for other fulfilling things in your life. 
Also, it's not like the extra protein can't be digested or that it's a waste, as a lot of people say. Like it's still going to contribute to satiety and overall caloric intake. So if this is the portion that feels satisfying and satiating to Will to take him to that last snack of the day, it looks really good to me. Final kind of meal slash snack, which is 200 grams of watermelon and two squares of some dark chocolate, right around 200 calories. Never get me to pick watermelon for you. Like, look at that. Yeah, yeah, that watermelon does look like shit. But honestly, what's up with this year of crappy watermelons here in Canada? Like. We had such a rainy spring. I feel like all the fruit has been kind of blah this year, but I'm really impressed that Will seems so blase about it because I feel like a mealy plate of watermelon would low key ruin my day. But if it was a good melon, I would say that this absolutely sounds like a delicious end to the day. Obviously this is a very healthy dessert. And if satiety overnight is an issue for Will's cut, I would suggest maybe adding in a source of protein or fat to really help him get through that evening. So maybe some cottage cheese would be a really great addition. But Will has pointed out that he's really trying to move away from, you know, a lot of artificially sweetened foods and focus on whole foods that feel good to him. So if this feels good and if the theobromine and the caffeine and the dark chocolate doesn't interfere with his sleep quality, I say it sounds like a really great choice to me. Okay, so according to both mine and Will's calculations, he's consuming just over 2,500 calories with about 30% from protein, 50% from carbs, and 20% from fat. So definitely this is a higher protein, lower fat diet, but probably what I would expect from a fitness enthusiast on a cut. There really weren't any major nutrients that I was particularly concerned about, and actually, I feel like he's done a really good job at covering his micronutrient and his fiber needs, even when trying to lose weight. And the fact that he's consistently switching up his protein, carb, fat, and veggie sources definitely means he's getting even greater variety in his micronutrients for the day. Now, before I really get into my thoughts on his diet, I wanna reiterate and remind everyone that Will has very specific training and aesthetic goals. So my neutrality around his overt calorie counting is trying to be mindful and respectful of his body autonomy. And it really should not be taken as universal support for this approach for the general population. You know that this is not my style of eating. I actually think it can be emotionally exhausting at best and emotionally destructive at worst. But I also respect that some people can just collect this data, meet their goals, and move on with their life. Now, what I will say is that it does seem that Will has definitely evolved in his approach to food. In the past, we've definitely seen him adopt more of a if it fits your macros kind of approach where he's talked about having like a daily Tim Hortons donut because he can just kind of work the 220 calories into his budget for the day. He also would lean more heavily on artificial sweeteners and other low-cal diet ingredients to kind of reimagine junk food staples like a low-calorie ice cream or fried chicken. Whereas in this video, he actually makes it quite clear that he's trying to move away from that to try to focus on a simpler whole food diet. I don't think that one approach is necessarily better than the other. I really think it comes down to what's gonna feel physically better to you, but also be more psychologically satisfying. And while I do think that there could be a middle ground here where you know there's room for a mid-morning donut, but also for a watermelon and dark chocolate dessert, I think if this current approach is physically feeling better to Will, then it totally makes sense to me. I will, however, say that even despite his training goals and caloric budget, I do think he could stand to loosen the reins like a little bit on weighing out every single ingredient that he eats. Like the calories in 40 grams versus 75 grams of cucumber probably isn't going to wreck a prep. Just saying. But what I really love most about Will is not just the overt sexual innuendo spewed throughout his videos. That's what she said. But that despite his strict caloric budget, he still manages to prioritize variety and keep mealtimes unique and interesting. 
Most dieters in this industry eat the exact same thing every single day, partially out of convenience and partially out of fear that maybe switching things up would cause some major blip on the scale. But getting in a nice variety of different proteins and different produce is not only really important for nutrition status, but also for motivation and diet adherence as well. As he discussed in his rest day video here, he doesn't see health as strictly physical well-being, but also as a complete state of mental, emotional, and spiritual wellness. And I think that with age, maturity, and just general data collection, he's probably getting better at finding the most sustainable approach to meeting his goals and enjoying his life. And on that note, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you liked it, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below to see who you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.